Hey everyone, welcome back to Simple Networks. Morgan here. Today we're going to be talking about the new UI in Unify OS. And since I have started uploading Unify videos to this channel, I have never once recommended that people use the new UI or the new interface simply because it has never been fully featured. It's always been missing what, in my opinion, are some major components. However, I was going through the new UI the other day after um, I updated my Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, and I was pleasantly surprised at the features they had introduced, um, as well as the general layout of the UI, and I've kind of determined that I think it is usable for most people for daily administration. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take you through the new interface as it is um, on 7-20-2022, um, and we can take a look at some of the features that have recently been added that I'm excited about and just give you a general overview of what it looks like so you can decide for yourself if you want to use the new UI for daily administration. So let's get started. Most everything is done within the settings menu here and we'll start where it starts and that's on the Wi-Fi settings. So one thing I want to point out before we get too deep into the Wi-Fi settings is this just really nice and simple layout um, for what they're calling the global AP settings. Now these are just settings that are going to apply across the board for all of your access points with a caveat. So you can pick your channel width, you can um, either let the access points determine themselves how much transmitting power they're using, or you can set it yourself. Here's my favorite feature, here is the caveat. It's a good caveat in this case though you do get exclusion. So you can set your global AP settings here, but you can say, you know what, this is great for most of them, but for these two access points in my case, I don't want them using the global AP settings. Down below that, we have the AP site settings, which let you do wireless meshing. Now, normally I would have this turned off, and when I was going through here at first, I was pretty nervous because if you have wireless meshing on, and the access points are hardwired as well, it can become a real problem. They'll start having issues where they're trying to communicate with each other, both through the wired interface and wirelessly. Uh, but luckily, because I have my two access points on the exclusions list, that's not an issue. And you can go down here and calibrate your channel optimization settings um, or have it automatically calibrate if you'd like to do that. Now, when you create a new Wi-Fi network, there are some new things in here as well. So there's your typical name, password, and selecting which network you want the Wi-Fi network to piggyback off of, off of or the VLAN. You also get to create groups of APs really easily now. So you can have, you know, a Wi-Fi network broadcast on, you know, let's say you have 10 access points, but you only want the network broadcasting on five of them. You can do that, which I think is pretty cool. You have all of your traditional manual settings. However, you do have client device isolation built right in now. Before there was an option that seemed like it was for client device isolation, but it's not actually what it did. It was actually very weird. And I've had a few people in my comments ask me about this. So as you can see from the description they give you, it says prevents wireless clients on the same AP from communicating with each other. So great for guest networks, things like that. So let's move on to networks now. Inside networks is one of my favorite things that they've just recently added. I was waiting for this because I saw this as a major issue. Um, with the new UI. When you go to create a new network, you have the VLAN only option again. This was missing for the longest time, and I've had a few clients who wanted to use it, and it just wasn't there, and they had to go back to the old interface to use it. But finally, if you're not using a Unify Gateway, and you want to pass some VLANs in from, say, your PFSense router or your Edge router into the Unify system, you can do that now. It seems like such an obvious feature you would want to have right away, but it took them a while to add it. So I'm super glad to see that. In terms of configuration, all that is pretty much the same. Nothing new here. Again, the big one I was excited for was the VLAN only. I don't know why that wasn't there to begin with. It was kind of a basic feature. Switching over to internet, you have easy access to adding multiple WANs if you want, if you want to get that little uh, you know, 4G LTE backup connection or something like that. Mine's not super 
populated here because I don't use any of those features, but they are here under internet if you'd like to. For VPN, this is easier now. I like the way this is laid out. It's the same features as before, so that you can either do the VPN server where you know computers can remote into your network from you know their users' home networks or something like that. But they threw site-to-site -site VPN down here. It used to be in the menu when you would create a new network or VLAN. That's where it resided. Now it's right in the VPN settings, which I think are better. So if you've got a big corporate unified network at your headquarters and then you've got you know a substation or a second location that you want to VPN into that, there you go. Create site-to-site -site VPN. Pretty neat. Profiles. I don't really know if this is necessarily new. I think it just looks different. Um, but you can do port and IP groups now, and this comes in handy when you are setting up firewall rules, and it comes in handy when you are setting up VPN connections. Speaking of that, you have your radius server, your port groups, your bandwidth profiles, and your switch ports, and some guest hotspot settings. This seems weird. You might think this is new. It's not. If you click on that, um, really, it's just for if you want to, you know, really turn it into a hotel-esque kind of hotspot where, you know, you have your guest landing page or what's called a captive portal. Um, and I'm hoping, I'm going to do a video on this later, but I'm hoping that the captive portal has been upgraded a little bit because before it was nearly impossible uh, to get it to work on the majority of devices. I've actually recommended against using Unify's built-in captive portal for a long time because it would only trigger 60% of the time in my experience. So hopefully that's better. Definitely a video on that coming soon. Other than that, pretty much the same. That's all that is, just in a different location now. And heading into the system, if you really want to enable what they're calling the legacy interface now, you can. Um, other than that, this is where all your backup information is, pretty much the same as before, just in this nice new list. So, that is what we're looking at for the new UI. I would be willing to say that it is 90% of the way done by now. It is to the point where probably 90% of people who use Unify OS, or the Unify controller, rather, um, are going to be able to do what they need to do without going back to the legacy interface. I'm sure for some advanced users there's still you know three or four things that you might have to use the legacy interface for now. Um, and I can do pretty much everything I need for most of the small business networks I set up through the new UI. So take that for what you will. Leave comments down below and let me know what you think of the new UI, if there's any features still missing that are bugging you, or if you're liking it or you're hating it, whatever, just let me know. Um, other than that, subscribe if you want to, don't if you don't, and I'll see you in the next video.